In 2023, high up in the Himalayas, Louis Stitzinger set out on a daring journey to conquer Kanchenjunga, one of the tallest mountains on Earth. He'd climbed many mountains before, but this one was different. It was his biggest challenge yet. As Luis made his way up the icy slopes, the air grew thinner and the wind howled fiercely around him. Yet his determination never wavered. He had a fire burning inside him, driving him forward, step by step. But just when it seemed like he was on top of the world, tragedy struck and there was nobody there to hear his screams. This is his story. High in the eastern Himalayas, at a staggering altitude of 8,583 meters, stands Kanchenjunga, the third highest mountain in the world. Its steep slopes and treacherous weather make it a formidable challenge for any climber daring to conquer its heights. Named the Five Treasuries of the Great Snow, due to its five majestic adjacent peaks nestled within the Himalayan range on the border of India and Nepal, with only the infamous Mount Everest and K2 surpassing it. Despite its beauty, Kanchenjunga is unforgiving. It holds a grim reputation, with a 22% fatality rate claiming the lives of many who dare to scale its peaks. The first deaths on the mountain occurred back in 1905, as Sherpas and a Swiss mountaineer lost their lives to an avalanche, yet the allure of Kanchenjunga continued to beckon adventurers, leading to more casualties over the years, as men tried to become the first to summit. But even after their triumphant feat, Kanchenjunga remained a deadly challenge, claiming the lives of over 40 brave souls. Among the fallen were renowned climbers like Andrzej Czok of Poland in 1986, Wanda Ruchkiewicz, also from Poland in 1992, and Benoit Chamoni of France in 1995. These names, etched in the panels of mountaineering history, serve as a solemn reminder of the mountain's deadly embrace. Despite the risks, adventurers continue to test their mettle against Kanchenjunga, each ascent fraught with peril and the possibility of becoming another tragic tale on its slopes. Louis Steitzinger was born on December 16, 1968, in Fusen, Germany, and was destined for the heights of adventure. His father, Volkmar Bershi Stitzinger, himself a seasoned mountain guide, instilled in him a love for the mountains from an early age. Growing up in Ostalgoe alongside his two younger siblings, Luis's passion for mountaineering only grew stronger over the years. He pursued his academic journey at the Faculty of Sports Science, which was a part of the Technical University of Munich, where he excelled and was honored with the prestigious Dr. Ger Gertrude Kromholtz Prize. Not content with just one field of study, Luis also delved into English at LMU Munich while undergoing rigorous training to become a certified mountain and ski guide. From 1998 to 2003, Luis dedicated himself professionally to the Munich section of the German Alpine Club, serving as head of the mountaineering department, overseeing the library and managing equipment rentals. His expertise and dedication earned him recognition and respect within the mountaineering community and kick-started his journey. The following years from 2004 to 2012, Luis took on new challenges as he led expeditions and extreme mountaineering ventures for the DAV Summit Club program. During his illustrious 30-year career, Luis achieved remarkable feats in the world of mountaineering, with an impressive 10 8,000 meter peaks conquered, some even summited multiple times, and seven daring ski descents under his belt, his adventurous spirit knew no bounds. Alongside his wife, Alex von Mel, an accomplished mountaineer, he scaled six of these majestic peaks, forging unforgettable memories in the thin air of the highest summits. Not one to shy away from pioneering endeavors, in 2006, Luis etched his name in mountaineering history by executing the first ski descent of Gasherbrum II, a towering peak standing at 8,034 meters. Accompanied by Sebastian Hogg and Benedict Baum, he navigated the treacherous slopes with skill and determination, leaving an incredible mark on the mountain and the community. Two years later in 2008, Luis went on another groundbreaking adventure as he tackled the formidable 
Temple Dahmered face of Nanga Parbat. Scaling the peak multiple times that season, he reached new heights of bravery by clipping into his skis at a staggering altitude of 7,850 meters, just 300 feet shy of the mountain's summit. With each daring descent, Luis pushed the boundaries of what was thought possible in the realm of high-altitude skiing, solidifying his legacy as a true pioneer of the mountains. In 2014, after conquering the heights of Broad Peak towering at 8,051 meters, alongside his wife, he set his sights on another formidable challenge, K2. Scaling past the daunting 8,000 meter mark, their journey was abruptly halted by the merciless grip of bad weather. Undeterred, he found himself on a daring descent, skiing from Camp 4 down to the very base of the majestic mountain. This trail, known as the Kukuczka Piotrowski Route or the Polish Route, witnessed the first ever ski descent marking a historic feat. It remained the longest ski descent on K2 until 2018. But little did he know that his journey to Kanchenjunga would mark the end of his extraordinary mountaineering tale, leaving behind a legacy etched in the panels of adventure. In May 2023, Luis had a big dream, to climb Kanchenjunga, the third tallest mountain in the world, all by himself. Being the experienced climber he was, he did not plan to use any extra oxygen or have a Sherpa to help him. To make matters more difficult, he also planned to ski down from the top of the mountain. Luis was very determined, and after weeks of preparation, acclimation trips, and training, he climbed up the steep icy slopes of Kanchenjunga. Facing many challenges along the way, the climb was difficult and tiring, but nothing would stop him. Over the span of multiple days, he cleared rock, snow, and ice until, finally, on May 25th at 5 p.m., his efforts were rewarded as Luis reached the very top of the mountain. The moment was filled with pride and joy, but instead of celebrating for too long, he knew his journey was only halfway over. Luis had decided to leave his skis a bit lower down on the mountain in preparation for his descent. This allowed him to save energy when reaching the summit and proved to be the correct decision. He carefully made his way down to their location and then stopped to rest to put on the skis. Skillfully descending through the snow and ice, Luis was a master on the white powder. Even though the sun was beginning to set, he kept going, showing his bravery and skill, or perhaps overconfidence. As the evening wore on and darkness cloaked the mountain in its embrace, Luis found himself still lingering near the summit of Kenchenjunga. Time passed as the hours stretched on, concern beginning to grow, and by 7 p.m. there was still no sign of his descent. But as the night deepened, worry turned to fear. With each passing minute, the silence grew more ominous. Despite the desperate efforts of rescue teams, the treacherous weather and impassable conditions thwarted any immediate aid. For two long days, the mountain remained shrouded in mist and uncertainty, with no relief in sight and no word from Luis. It wasn't until May 30th that a Sherpa team, undeterred by the challenges that nature had thrown its way, finally stumbled upon Luis's lifeless body at an altitude of 8,400 feet. His faithful crampons still adorned to his boots, a reminder of the journey that had led him to this fateful place. An autopsy later revealed the grim truth. Luis had succumbed to the merciless grip of high-altitude cerebral and pulmonary edema, conditions brought on by the unforgiving altitude. His valiant spirit had been silenced, his final moments shrouded in the icy embrace of sleep on the night of May 25th or in the early hours of May 26th. Luis's untimely passing sent shockwaves through the mountaineering community, leaving behind a void that can never be filled. His friend and fellow guide, Dave Watson, took to Instagram to express the depth of his loss, highlighting not only Luis's remarkable achievements, but also his warmth, kindness, and boundless compassion. In the eyes of those who knew him best, Luis was more than just a skilled mountaineer. He was a beacon of positivity, radiating humility and grace in every step he took. As the world mourned the loss of a true pioneer, Luis's wife Alex found solace in the mountains they had both cherished. In the wake of her husband's passing, she resolved to honor his memory by continuing their shared passion for adventure and exploration, finding comfort in the familiar embrace of the wilderness they both loved so dearly. For Alex, the mountains were not just a place of solace, but a testament to the enduring bond they had shared, a bond that transcended even the barriers of death. 
and so with unwavering determination and a heart heavy with loss, she vowed to carry on their legacy, keeping alive the spirit of adventure and camaraderie that defined their lives together.